Hello, my name is Tree Demon, and I'm the Devil Stockbroker. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. Before we begin, please understand I'm not a financial advisor, and none of the following content is financial advice. The following content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Trading stock carries inherent risk, and you should always respect and understand your own personal risk when considering any investment. Please don't take what I say as gospel, and please do not trade based on the information that I receive and share through my content. Thank you so much, and have a hell of a time in the stock market. Hello everybody, this is Drew Demon, the Devil Stockbroker, and I'm bringing you a market update just after close of uh, close of the day. Today we're looking at uh, a few of our picks from the past week, starting with Mullen, or uh, M-U-L-N. This is a uh, squeeze pick that we have uh, received several alerts on, and uh, it had some recent moves a couple days ago, uh, on the 1st of uh, March and end of, uh, end of February, and it's recently just made some moves again today. So Mullen's actually outperforming the oil market of all things right now, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I gotta say, I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This is exactly what we kind of expected for uh, Mullen to make a nice big move for uh, towards its uh, one dollar resistance. So as you can see from uh, from our previous highs here at uh, around uh, two dollars or uh, about a buck eighty five, Mullen sold off really quickly and then hit support again at eighty five cents. That is just above the uh, that is just above the uh, exercise price of that, uh, that warrant offering that was made by Asusa Holdings, which is, uh, one of the main players that we're watching for the financing going on for Mullen. They tapped that support a few times and broke down below it and, uh, returned back to uh, a little over 70, uh, yeah, a little over 73 cents at the lowest low. And now we are tracking back upwards and establishing a new pattern. We have a, uh, a bit of a head and shoulders that's kind of forming here, so that's something to watch out for. Just uh, in terms of technical patterns, you want to uh, check and make sure that we're not, uh, we're not falling below this neckline if it, uh, if it does end up uh, playing out. But if we can crack over this, uh, this level of uh, $1.09 or $1.10, then I think we'll be uh, setting up for a new... Uh, a new series of highs. <clears throat> uh, for those who are new to the play and don't understand what's going on with Mullen, Mullen is an automotive technology that's uh, well, an automotive technology company that's uh, new to the EV space. Um, they have some really sketchy financing that's going on with them. That's kind of beating them down and forcing their executive team to repeatedly dilute their stock against their, uh, I think, against their will because they kind of have them in a stranglehold according to the contract terms. Um, basically saying that they are forcing the company to sell shares to them at a lower price than what the market is offering um, because that's what they're entitled to in their contract for a equity line of credit as well as uh, stock warrants. So because of that position, Mullen has kind of backed itself into a corner and um, it seems a little bit sketchy. Uh, in addition to that, there's a lot of uh, short exempts that have been hammering the stock down. If you want to know more about that, check a few videos uh, earlier on and you'll find uh, a full gamut of DD that was done to explain short exempts and why it's uh, such a such a significant data point that I don't think is paid attention to enough in the markets. But in any case, Mullen is uh, setting up these new higher lows here. You know, we got to tap, tap, tap off of uh, off this ascending line here, this ascending line of support. And if we uh, have any luck, we'll see a new uh, a new line of support established here at a dollar ten, and Mullen can move from there. What we are targeting is for market makers to be put in a position where they are not able to cover their short exempts and their failures to deliver that are subsequently created before T plus four, which was today. Today was T plus four, so now all those failures to deliver. Uh, or rather, all of those short exempts, which were not located back on Wednesday, should have failed to deliver today. So this is uh, this is the day that we expect them to start feeling the pressure. And uh, it would seem that that is the case. The stock started moving up. This may have been retail uh, to begin with, uh, or it could have been the market makers. We're not sure. Volume is volume, though. So we'll take what we can get. The target that we're looking for is to see Mullen get back above $1.30 and uh, establish support here and make a slow roll 
uh, towards $2. If that can happen before March 18th, then there's a good chance that we see a whole bunch of options volume on the uh, $2.5 strike, which uh, will bring in additional attention and volume into the stock as speculation for that strike uh, kind of runs wild. Maybe we get some FOMO, but we'll find out. So over here, we're looking at Mullen's short interest data from Ortex. The Ortex data shows that currently we're sitting at 22% of free float is uh, short and uh, a utilization of 99.69. So now officially for the first time, Mullen has established itself as uh, set for the first uh, the first trigger for the short squeeze uh, signal theory, which is uh, short interest uh, uh, high short interest with a utilization greater than 95%. So 22% definitely high enough short interest for a short squeeze to take place. Utilization is uh, maxed out, although that does not mean that they cannot find more shares elsewhere. It does make it difficult for them to lend out and borrow shares uh, as easily. They will have to put in some effort in order to find them. On top of that, we see that the short interest rose massively since the short exempt data got pointed out and we noticed how badly uh, these guys were uh, backing themselves into a corner. So all of that stuff put together, we see a huge opportunity manifesting itself uh, for Mullen. Currently, the uh, cost of borrow fees are pretty modest. 11% uh, is a little high, but it's nowhere near hard to borrow high we're probably going to start seeing those prices elevate here in the next few days if we uh, continue to see the price rise in the face of higher shorting interest. Taking a look at the uh, off exchange volume for Mullen today was just absolutely bananas. So even though Mullen was uh, pushing uh, almost a dollar, a dollar fifteen at one point, if I'm not mistaken. The off-exchange volume was massive, 72% on the day, and uh, only 14% only combined between the New York and the NASDAQ stock exchanges. So almost all of it is going through dark pools, internalizers, and uh, market maker trading systems or alternative trading systems. We can make some assumptions that the players that are moving this stock, for the most part, are institutions, possibly market makers. If we look at the Mullen FINRA data from today, we can see that the short volume was indeed extremely high. And we had a uh, we had the uh, short volume over the total volume have a sudden drop off. So for whatever reason, today of all days, the short volume dropped in comparison to the total volume, which tells us that a lot of retail has stepped in at this point. I'm taking this as a sign that market makers are hesitant to fulfill the buying orders because they may be indeed, as we assumed, uh, over leveraged on their short positions. If you've been with this channel for a while, you understand that market makers, in order to fulfill retail buying orders, must short to fulfill the other side of that order. If a market maker is not stepping in to fulfill those orders, then they're going to start pushing those orders elsewhere for purchases to be made. And, uh, and denying them outright. And that would be because the market maker feels nervous about taking that position, indicating they may think that uh, if the stock moves, they may not be able to profit off of the trading and in fact may take a loss. All of this is a good sign. The drop off in uh, short trading volume, the increase in short exempt volume from market makers persistently using short exempts in order to try to fulfill the buy orders is all a good sign. And this would mark the first day of short exempts being above 3%. What we're looking for for the second trigger of the short squeeze signal theory is for the short exempt ratio to be above 3% for three consecutive trading days or more. And uh, the final piece would be the five-day SMA increasing at a rate of 5% over three consecutive days. What we want is consistent movement of the stock continuously pushing towards the upside. So now that we've got the utilization, that's our first signal trigger. If we get the short exempt ratio above 3% for three consecutive trading days, that's trigger number two. And then the five-day SMA moving up at 5% or more for three consecutive trading days, then that's trigger number three. If we get all three of those, then we're essentially going to give ourselves a, a full confidence bet that the squeeze will occur within uh, 
15 to 30 trading days. And that's, uh, that's how we play this. So at the moment, we, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good plan to remain patient. You wait for confirmation of your trading thesis before you take a, a big position. If you are looking to invest in Mullen long term, then, I mean, you can, of course, purchase shares or, or leap options if that's your thing. But um, that's, that's entirely up to you. None of this is financial advice. Um, so everybody's responsible for their own trades here. I'll also uh, show uh, show this visual data. This is basically the same thing as what you saw in the uh, in the table that was just up a second ago. This is mainly for visual uh, representation of what we see here. The black lines here with the closing price moving down from one dollar, spiking back up to two dollars here on the first of March, and then coming back down, and the five-day SMA moving in accordance with that. So what we're looking for is to keep the five-day SMA. Uh, tracking above a dollar for as long as possible. If the five-day SMA remains above a dollar, then that's that's pretty much means that we're on target as far as keeping the price averaging up there. In order to do that, the price just has to be trading and closing above a dollar more days than it isn't. As long as the price continues to show that upside and continues to bounce off of that one dollar support, then you know it's in good shape. The volume is rising on a uh, on a consistent level. You notice we did have this big spike, but if you just follow the overall trend on the average, it looks as though it's creating a bit of an exponential uh, trend here. That's also a very good sign. Shows that there's more consistent interest in the uh, in the stock as it continues to get more uh, more buying volume and more retail sentiment, pushing it towards a higher closing prices every single day. In addition to that, we also uh, just just as a proof of concept here, we went to uh, we went to ChartExchange.com to go and get the uh, retail sentiment. Um, this is their sentiment tracker for uh, discussion online of what's going on with Mullen. And as you notice, uh, since the day that uh, Mullen made its huge move, closing up at around a, uh, two dollars uh, or close to two dollars on the twenty eighth of February. There's been a lot of retail interest, especially on the r slash short squeeze. That interest has been consistently high since then. So, and it's beginning to uh, show a bit more interest here as well on super stock. So, people are uh, people are talking about it. The penny stocks, Wall Street bets, uh, and super stock subreddits are paying attention to this stock. It is getting it is getting more and more traction as uh, as people keep talking about it. And of course. Hell's Trading Floor is continuously doing more and more investigation on the actors that are involved in this stock and the institutions that are behind the financing and potential shorting and uh, distorting of the stock's future. Checking in on a couple of other plays that we've got going on, there's an additional one called ALZM, which we're still watching. It's sold off a little bit after uh, we took a position based on these two alerts here from February 16th and February 24th. Price is bouncing off of a dollar, which is pretty much support. Um, if it falls below that, that's there's really nothing beneath it. It's, uh, but I mean, your risk is pretty low. It, it can only fall down by a, <laughs> a stock like this can only fall down so far before it delists. This is kind of a, uh, this is just kind of a, uh, a technical play, just estimating based on this OBV and uh, what we call hellish divergence with these uh, repeated plateaus on the OBV. As the stock goes lower and lower and lower, OBV rises and plateaus over and over and over again. So what we're looking for next is for a big volume pop and uh, attention to come into the stock. We notice sentiment is starting to rise on the retail side with this stock appearing repeatedly on r slash short squeeze and a few other subreddits. In addition to that, the, um, the stock has been uh, starting to... Uh, move on short exempts, which is part of what these two alerts are for, um, or rather what caused these uh, alerts to take place. We, uh, we also happen to notice that there's, there's a lot of similarities between ALZN, Mullen, and, um, and BRQS, and another company called MySize. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring, up a, uh, I'm gonna bring up a separate chart here, and we're going to take a look at these uh, side by side. So here on the trading view charts, we've got four different stocks that have, uh, they, they bear some very uh, interesting similarities with each other. Over here I have my size, Alzamed Neuro Inc. or ALZN, Mullen, and Borks Technologies or BRQS. These are 
four companies which bear an interesting similarity in that they have all been handled and traded by either Todd Milton Alt or Alt Global Holdings or one of his subsidiary companies or shell companies, or they have been receiving financing for Isuza or both. There's an interesting relationship between these firms and these stocks that uh, that it's impossible to ignore. So when I look at my size, I couldn't help but notice there was this uh, this interesting sell off in their stock ever since their IPO, and a massive amount of uh, accumulation that took place as the OBV continuously plateaued throughout its trading history. It kept having to perform reverse splits and uh, kept having to make bad deals in order to receive funding and capital from uh, mainly from alt holdings and continuously uh, continuously had its uh, its share price beaten down throughout that entire period of time. Uh, when all of a sudden uh, on October the uh, October the 26th, the stock received a huge amount of retail sentiment. It pumped significantly and then sold off instantaneously. The uh, and that happened to be the same day that Todd Alt exited his position as marked by his 13D filing. The uh, this later led to litigation on uh, against Alt as well as. Uh, uh, my size, and uh, that's still an ongoing thing. Although uh, recent filings indicate that there may have been a settlement, which has not been yet disclosed. In addition to that, Elzamed, which is a current holding of Todd Alt, is uh, showing the same kind of plateauing activity and repeated pops in volume, um, which really, I don't know, like it just makes me really curious. In any case, uh, because ALZN is one of our uh, one of our picks, we're kind of uh, waiting to see what happens in the near term. Uh, but with this sell off, I have a I have a feeling that this is not going to last. So for that reason, I'm going to continue averaging down my position and purchasing a few more options for uh, May twentieth, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Those options are particularly cheap with uh, ten cents a share or uh, $10 per call contract. Mullen is doing uh, the same thing, big sell-off in its history, and then a consolidation, and suddenly all these volume pops. So, And then finally, Borks Technologies, which has received a lot of funding uh, and financing agreements from Asusa, which basically look identical to Mullen's financing agreements, and uh, Borks has been beaten down to uh, sub- 50 cents now it's trading at uh is trading at 34 cents today um there is supreme risk of delisting so i'm not recommending anybody uh buy any of these stocks honestly i'm not uh i'm not personally giving any kind of buy recommendations here i'm just kind of showing this to establish this very odd relationship between these stocks uh and the players that are in them and notice that they all seem to sell off from the time of their ipo and uh they all get uh, they all get this same attention from these repeated uh, these these familiar faces. <clears throat> Let's go talk about something uh, a little bit more interesting. So oil oil stocks and energy stocks are making huge moves. This is where most traders are focusing their attention is on oils and futures making huge moves and swings, uh, especially uh, on uh, uh, on the SPDR and. It's uh, it's it's main like obviously it has to do with Russia and the cutoff of Russian oil. The main focus here being oil. A lot of these different oil stocks, such as Indo or Indonesia Energy Corporation, which made a huge move up to uh, sixty one dollars and fifty cents. Currently, uh, it hit a high of eighty six ninety nine, which is <laughs> that's damn impressive. It's currently trading at about sixty five dollars in post market. The uh, next stock that we're looking at is Polar Power, which is uh, it, it is another one similar to Indo. It is uh, it made a big pop in volatility. It's got earnings coming here very soon, and it's uh, it, it's got some some exciting prospects. It's also a very low float, which is something to be careful of. Um, Indo had a float of uh, 1.578 million shares, and Polar 
has uh, 7.059 million. So these stocks can move very quickly and very easily. Um, it's it's worth paying attention to these kind of uh, these kind of stocks that are like basically micro floats are able to make huge swings in their price very rapidly. And since these stocks do not have an options chain, there's less of an opportunity for there to be market maker uh, interference because they're strictly trading in stocks and they're not able to hedge using options. So the moves are a lot more organic and indi indicative of FOMO and uh, institutional buying. So if anything, you might expect these stocks to move more honestly based on market sentiment. So if the oil market continues to push, then we might expect Pola uh, to move kind of similarly to Indo as well. And uh, I, I do want to uh, give a shout out to the user who called this one out in the Discord. Uh, the user, Marg, uh, <laughs> I want to I say thanks for uh, bringing, this, uh, bringing up this ticker and pointing it out. Uh, it does seem like a very interesting play. And then in addition to Indo, there's another ticker that uh, is very similar. This one does have options, and it's just uh, had a earnings report, which uh, indicates a, uh, a $0.03 cent surprise on its uh, earnings report. And it is, uh, it is also a low float with $24.5 million currently on its float. This is the first uh, green earnings that they've been able to report, and it's been flying as of, uh, as of the last two days. So... This one is a bit of a riskier play. It's it's going it's going straight in up through the sky in post market trading right now, uh, actively trading at around seven dollars. So this one uh, this one might be a uh, multi day runner as it continues uh, as it continues to pull in all of this bullish sentiment from the rising oil prices in the wake of uh, crisis in Ukraine. Before we wrap this video up here today, we're going to go over some of the plays that we had recently. Um, Camber Energy, or CEI, is one that I was playing. I had taken a position for uh, some, uh, I believe they were $2.50 strike calls for uh, mid-March. I am now fully out of that position, took profit at uh, at the top. I, I closed out um, half of my position during the run-up, and uh, I took a 100% profit, so I was... Uh, so I was able to let just play with the house's money, and then I took the rest of my profits after we uh, approached this uh, Fibonacci resistance line, and then got rejected. I may be looking to take in another position here and see if we uh, we consolidate, which it does seem as though we are appearing to do so. Currently, it's trading at a dollar thirty-six in post market trading. So if uh, CEI opens at about the same and it continues to show uh, bullish divergence on the uh, RSI and the uh, and the OBV, then I may uh, re-enter my position once the uh, volatility cools off a little bit. But if not, I mean, hey, anybody who's still in the position, congratulations if you end up uh, uh, winning. I'm just uh, trying to play things careful, not working with too much liquidity these days. So I'm just trying to uh, take my gains when I can get them and uh, be a little bit more cautious. Uh, moving on to uh, the SPY, uh, I also took a position at the end of the day with the SPY. Uh, I took a call position. There was a lot of bullish flow on unusual whales that was showing premium for uh, put sells or puts against the bid, and um, and uh, calls being bought on on and above the ask. So there was uh, there was a lot of bullish divergence here near the close of the day. So I decided to go ahead and take myself a uh, a bullish position. I am currently playing a call spread for uh, 430, 440 as my uh, as my buy and sells respectively um, it's just a single call spread uh, bullish call spread for that uh, that price and I'm playing those out till the end of the month we'll see how it does in the next couple of days if we get some volatility here I'm uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about those uh, right now spy is trading down below a dollar a dollar 19 in post market but hey we've had big gap ups in the morning before so I'm uh, I'm staying optimistic. And then finally, we'll go over all of the other plays that we have going on just relative to the SPY. AMC currently trading at support at $15.20. And uh, we've, got a, uh, we've got support here at um, $14.90, which it appears that we may have bounced. We're 
back up to 1521 in post market trading. So it looks like that bounce has been completed. I'm going to uh, probably look to take another position in AMC tomorrow morning and uh, add to my uh, add to my calls for uh, for April and see if I can scalp a few uh, scalp a few shares off of that as well. This is a this is a pretty nice uh, this is a pretty nice area to buy for AMC. This is the lowest the price has been. And this resi this support is only getting stronger and stronger as we see more buying and buying and buying happening as it taps this uh, $15 mark. GameStop is doing a very similar thing in which it's bouncing off of the, uh, it's, it's bouncing off between 80, uh, 85 and $90. And as the, uh, as the price continues to bounce off of that we're seeing more and more accumulation which you can see based off of the uh, the OBV so as you look at uh, as you look at GameStop continuously uh, continuously bouncing off of these low areas note that the OBV is actually moving at a slight incline that's what we call bull bullish divergence on the OBV so that does tell you that uh, there are more buyers than sellers so people are accumulating shares at this level they are not selling off and the fact that we have bounced off of these support lines on both AMC and GME and their OBVs look so close to the same. That is a very bullish sign. I'll take that as a uh, as a good indication that we may yet see $20 again in the near term between now and April. So I'm going to go ahead and take a, uh, take a long position in the morning on these two stocks when I uh, have some time. And uh, Progenity, of course. Uh, Progenity is uh, bouncing off of its support also. And Again, it's doing pretty much the same thing that uh, that the other uh, AMC, GME, and the other meme stocks have been doing. I, I could go over uh, so many of the other ones like BBIG and uh, and and ATER, but they're all pretty much doing the same thing. So it feels a bit redundant to uh, to continuously cover e each of these particular tickers every single time. Um, they just keep bouncing off of this support and they just won't go under. And now Progenity, it's got earnings coming up very soon. And there's some, uh, there's some negative estimates currently, but Progenity has already got its preclinical trial data ready to go. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of expecting them to release that just before earnings, just to get a little bit of uh, bullish sentiment going. We do know that they have those numbers. They have received them. They just have not disclosed them yet. And they are under a uh, a fiduciary obligation to disclose those numbers before their earnings. So this is uh, this is something that we've been waiting for for quite a while. And uh, with the with the price continuously selling uh, selling down to a dollar ten and bouncing off of that level, while simultaneously the OBV continues to um, make uh, well basically no movement really. I'm thinking that this uh, this might be the uh, the calm before the storm and seeing if progenity makes a nice big move before earnings or even post earnings um, I'm I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling bullish and now feels like it's the right time to get back in uh, into some some heavier options although I uh, I do uh, caution everybody that with options understand that there is a tremendous a tremendous amount of risk so uh, if anyone's interested in how I'm playing my options for Progenity, I'm playing leaps and staying close to the money. That way, uh, if Progenity soars in the next two years, then uh, I'll be I'll be sitting pretty on top of uh, multiple, <laughs> well, several hundred call contracts at this point um, for Progenity going uh, that don't expire until January of 2024. So as I continue uh, accumulating those uh, those leap contracts, I'm expecting Progenity to make some big moves in my future. So um, I, I couldn't be more pleased to see that it's holding this support uh, as it approaches earnings. This this low volume, uh, I don't believe it will last. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens going into the earnings week of March. But um, yeah, stay stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll probably do some more coverage on Progenity as we get closer to earnings. I think that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a hell of a time in the markets.